Rob Marzullo here, Ram Studio Comics, and I've got a uh, video for you today that I think will be helpful uh, for all you digital painters out there. Um, how to create uh, true fire or more realistic flames. Uh, I've seen a couple different ways on how to do this, and I kind of uh, kind of came up with this on on my own. But uh, it, you know, it's a reflection of a few other types I've seen, so I don't want to totally take credit for it, but. Uh, let me show you what it is. So I take the uh, hand drawn selection tool and I kind of just draw a few shapes. Uh, you know, if I wanted it to look really traditional old school flame, it'd be a shape like that. Uh, but I don't. I was I don't know why I drew that because I was think I got flames on the brain. So, um, but uh, when doing flames, you know, they really have all kinds of like just crazy shapes. That's a pretty ugly one. Uh, so what you want to do is kind of layer these shapes. So let me just start with a couple wispy kind of beginning points. Goodness, all of a sudden I can't get the one I'm looking for. Usually once I get a start going, it starts to flow. Yeah, we'll start with that, even though it's pretty ugly. And then uh, take a soft brush. We're going to use, now notice I have a separate layer uh, from the, the background black that I'm using. Uh, now what I'll do is I'll just kind of glance in and out of this and highlight the edges. And I'll show you why. And that by itself, because I used a nice big soft brush, kind of works. But you can also just hit Filter, Gaussian Blur, uh, or Gaussian, I don't know how you say it, but Gaussian Blur. And there's one of my layers, right? Control D, Deselect. Okay, so there's one wisp of the flame. Now by itself, looks pretty pathetic you know so but not to worry that's just you know one aspect of it you can tone that down add another layer um, I think I might be too close to this let me back it up a little bit and now I'll just kind of start drawing these overlapping shapes and at first I just want some soft kind of bends that I'm looking for right now even that'll work um, I paint the edge, you know, not a, not a very solid edge, just kind of in and out. I'm just looking for the overlay effect at this point. Um, you can see how by that being brighter, it looks like it's a hair closer in the image work. So, um, you know, and a couple of them will even merge down just to save on layers. So control E will merge that down. Um, it'll t tone that back a, a hair again, add a new layer. And just keep on with the process so like I said it's not like I'm looking for a specific uh, shape or shapes some of them I'll tend to even um, transform the shape after I get it down if there's maybe a part of it that I like but then there's aspects of it I want to change but the reason why I like I like the effect when this is done uh, and I think it looks more natural. Is this kind of how flames work? They're, you know, they they there's all different types of shapes inside the uh, flame pattern. So overlaying these in this fashion uh, starts looking pretty realistic after a minute here. If you've ever painted uh, flames on cars, this is you'll use this kind of a method like this too. Now this one, I'm going to try to blur the edges of that, but that would be more of a background one. But yeah, let's do that. I'll drop these in the background, tone them back a little bit more. Those will just be kind of sh um, what do you call it, like uh, smoke in the background. So the harder line ones uh, will bring to the forefront, and then the smoke will kind of, you know, sit, uh, sit in the background there. There we go, that looks like a good one. You kind of just mess around with this and play it by ear, so forgive me if I'm not just, like, nailing it the first 
time out of the gate, you know. I just came up with this method uh, for doing this, um, so I'm still kind of a, a novice at it myself. I actually like that one. Now the other thing is I could take that control T, I could move it around, you know, try to play with it and see if some other shapes pop out. Uh, I could enlarge it or scale it down and, or, you know, duplicate it and see like right there. I like that, how it looks like a, a big wisp of, uh, you know, flame or smoke coming closer into the front view of the camera. So we'll, you know, we'll keep that there. Um, Let's see. All right, I think what I need now is a few that are going right up the the middle. Kind of, you know, you want you want crisscrossing uh, shapes. The areas where it uh, the flames kind of overlap creates hot spots, which adds another layer of uh, depth. So you definitely want that. Let's see what we got there. It's almost too up and down though. Let's try tilting it just a hair and stretching it out. See what we get there. Kind of digging that. Almost getting the feel uh, that the flames are tilting up and to the right. So I'll kind of go with that a bit. Uh, let's see, add another. Sorry, I keep wanting to draw like actual flames and um, try, I'm trying to tell myself not to do that. I think that'll look uh, unrealistic. You know, like uh, when, I, when I say actual flames, it's because I'm so used to doing uh, hot rod flames, old school flames like the one I drew originally when I started this. And um, so I have to tell my, myself not to do that because it's not going to look uh, appropriate to this effect that we're going for. Now the only thing is I'm getting a little bit too much of the hard pointed edges going on so let me try to soften that up. I want a little bit more of a smoke effect not I kind of like those for the at least for the background, so I'm gonna go and merge those down right now. Again, to save on layer space. Oh, don't want to merge to the background though. Um, and we're almost to the uh, the fun part, which I know everybody just wants to see these colored in, and and then they'll kind of ooh and ah uh, about it. Ugly shape again. Let's see. Um, Let's try that one. You see, I'm just kind of figuring this out. I don't really have, you know, a template or anything like that that I'm going off of. I'm just kind of doodling here. I almost want to work a shape inside of this shape, too. Let me see if that works out. One thing I like about layers, you can play with this kind of stuff and see what works, and if not, it's no big deal, it was just a separate layer. Alright, I want to keep a little bit of hard line since we're getting to the end of the, or you know, what I consider enough layers, but I do want to blur that just a tad, just not as much as the other one, so about right there. Uh, because what I feel that this is going to do is 
add a little bit of depth for us. So we want that perspective. Uh, another thing that we can do, I kind of like that the way it ends right there. So I'm going to take a soft brush and soften up the end of it like this. So by it not, you know, going further off the, the screen or whatever, it uh, adds a little bit more of a depth, I think, that it's up close. that there so all right so let's do one more like that and then we'll go to the fun part so I know this video is already getting a little bit long but I just wanted to make sure you you know understood how to how to get this done if you wanted to make these yourself so goodness uh, let's see kind of a flow Okay, I think I like that. In fact, I'm going to leave that one at full uh, opacity. I'm not going to blur it. Uh, again, so that, you know, this thing level has levels of depth to it. So now what I'm going to do is add a layer, uh, put it on color mode here. I'll just drop in like a deep, uh, deep red to start with. Um, that kind of lights it up. I don't know if it's maybe a tad too, too deep. Well, let's see where it goes. Add another layer. Uh, now I'm going to drop in like a golden yellow. Oh, color mode it like that. And I'll take a soft brush. Uh, and this is just the way I color. You know, do try it any any way that you uh, see fit there. But now my goal is to erase, you know, where I want the hot spots to be, so that the red fills in. And just softly doing it, I'll turn the opacity down. Yeah, it's halfway down, that's pretty good. So that I can just softly glance in there and start building in the uh, the red of the fire, just as I see fit, you know. And the, the cool thing about doing it this way too is that it's uh, totally uh, re, uh, you can re-edit it because it's a non-destructive approach. I'm not uh, destroying any of the layers that are below. So I can go back in there and, and change things up a bit. get rid of too much of that golden yellow there. Right, maybe a little bit more. Okay, so now the other thing, one of the final touches to really make this uh, pop a little bit more um, so we've got some color overlay, we've got our depthy kind of shadowy flame effects, you know, whether, you know, this looks a little bit more wispy than real flames or whatever, but, you know, you you could keep building upon this and, you know, the effect is there. Um, the other thing is, is you can take this now and I'll go ahead and make copies of this just so I don't, do, um, in case this doesn't come out the way that we hope. I can go back and change it. Uh, go ahead and merge these down. Control E for those that are selected together. And now the last thing that I'll do is I'll take the dodge tool and with highlights on exposure halfway down, I'll just go through and pick some of the uh, hotter spots in the, you know, the flame. I usually glance across the, uh, the edges of it to really bring it out. I want it to get so hot in the uh, areas where it actually uh, turns white and that just makes it look like it's a very um, hot part of the flame like that you see how it just starts to make it look more realistic or I don't know cool
right, so there you go. There's uh, there's my way to make digital flames. So hopefully this video has helped you. Uh, be sure to uh, write in the comments and let me know what you thought and what you'd like to see in the future. And if there was something I didn't explain properly here, let me know that too, so I can uh, make sure that it, you know I keep making these better each time I bring them out. And uh, I'll be sure to upload a high-res version of this onto my DeviantArt, which you can check out at uh, RamStudios1.DeviantArt. Be sure to like us on Facebook and uh, check out more of my vids if you don't mind. Take care of yourself, have fun, keep drawing, keep creating. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.